Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be painting a winter uh, sunset and uh, I will share with you in just a moment. Yesterday uh, we had a beautiful winter sunset. So audio and video are live. Great. Okay. So we had a beautiful winter sunset. We just got a fresh seven or eight inches of snow. And, um, all of a sudden yesterday afternoon, uh, Luke had just finished plowing and like the sun came through and all of these colors. It was gorgeous. So I'm going to show you that. So that sunset and uh, recently YouTube showed me and you guys, you know, some of you out there, you probably are like, Oh, I know her or I watch her all the time. But, um, the other day YouTube showed me Shelly Pryor fine art. I hadn't seen her channel before. I don't know where I've been under a rock, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, Oh, I loved it. And she did this technique uh, with birch trees. And I have it linked in the description. I have tagged her and linked the video that I'm talking about in the description below. So after this, if you want to check that out and see her do the technique, um, I definitely encourage you to do so. But I saw her do a technique for birch trees. And I was really excited about it. And she did this. It's, it's, similar to what today is. It's definitely inspired by, um, what Shelly did and the sunset that we had yesterday. And I was like, you know what? I need to do that. I need to try, I need to try this. I need this in my life. Um, but I thought that her technique would capture the glow of the sunset just perfectly. So we're going to do that today and you can paint along with me. We can do this step-by-step. Step. This is actually really easy. So if watercolor has kind of intimidated you, um, I really definitely invite you to grab some paper, grab some of your watercolor paints. You are not going to need many colors. We're going to do this with just a few. I'm going to use my Winter Newton professional colors that I shared with you last week. So huge shout out to Rob. Thank you for that. Um, because those were sent to me by Rob. And, um, yeah, so we are going to use the Winter Newton professional colors. You could use Cotman if Cotman is what you have, that would absolutely work. Uh, just whatever watercolors you have, you probably have these colors or similar. You're going to be able to make this work really easily. So let me bring you right to the desk and so that you can see what it is I'm talking about. All right, this right here, this winter sunset. We're going to paint this together and it really is easy. I, I promise it really is easy and we can do this. Uh, just a quick, uh, check on the chat and say, hello, George Pencilar is here. I saw Teresa, uh, Shauna Rowe Jackson, caution artist at play has made it. She's here. Hello. Uh, of course my moderators, Tara Giblin, Tara Giblin art and Joseph from the art of Joseph Fincham. They are both here. Um, who else? Sheila Hubbard. Yes. I saw Sheila in the beginning. So hi, I'm so glad all of you are with me today. And Rob, of course, who, uh, has provided me with these paints. So, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> all right. We are going to get right in because into this today, because I don't have as much time as I normally do about five o'clock, my house is going to start getting really noisy. So let me get this off. I did this one earlier and uh, we're just going to, you know, normally I don't paint the same thing twice, but I thought, you know what? I want to make sure <laughs> one, I want to make sure, you know, I'm all about trying it live for the first time with you. And, um, oh, let me see. Oh, so let me just, uh, can I share that? Yay, Rob, three, three months of membership with, here on YouTube. Thank you so much. And we do have, um, just our basic super fan and super fans. I am, I, I mentioned it last week 
if you are a super fan, I am going to open up the general areas of my um, Discord server. So if you are someone who uses Discord, um, YouTube should automatically, once I make that a benefit, should automatically give you access. And if you're if you have it connected, then it should just be very seamless. Um, but I am going to do that because I think that it's just a little something extra that I can do for you um, to say thank you. And being a super fan, basically, it's like buying me a cup of coffee, right? It's just for two ninety nine, um, less than three dollars a month. You will have special emotes that you can use in the chat. You have a little badge next to your name. Oh my gosh. Tara just reminded me. Yes. Tomorrow is the Patreon studio, uh, the studio, uh, hangout. So if you're a studio member, either here on YouTube or on Patreon, um, yeah, I'm so glad you reminded me of that Tara, because it has been a crazy day. I was not remembering. Um, Ooh, I'm going to have some sneak peeks for you guys. I can't wait. So yeah, if you're a studio member, I do once a month. If you're a creator member, it's once a quarter. You get to join me and come hang out here in the studio. We're live uh, on Zoom and we do lots of fun things. So yeah, it's a great time to ask questions, get help. I have that personal one-on-one -on -one time. Well, it's not one-on-one. -on -one. We're within the group, but you know, right now we're a very small group. So you actually can get a lot of personal attention right now. So if that, that's something that interests you. I'm sure Tara and Joseph have the links for all of that and they are in the description. So look at that. I love the way it captured the light and we're going to do this. We're going to do this together. So let's dive right in. I'm going to set that aside. First thing I'm going to do is tape off, let's tape off this I just, I kind of like the border. I don't have to, this is a block, but I kind of like that little border. And I am using, let's just go over the rest of my supplies today. I'm using my Meaden 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I love this. The link is in the description. I definitely recommend. And I also recommend buying directly from Meaden. Um, I have had um, wonderful experience with the company so far. I have some exciting things that I'm gonna be sharing with you soon. And Meaden has given us a discount code. So if you shop directly with them and use the code Clark10, that is capital C L A R K, um, the number 10, you get a discount on your order. And I absolutely, absolutely recommend this paper. I'm loving it. I am absolutely loving it so far. And if you like the Baohong Academy, they're really pretty much the same. And um, you can get that right from their website as well, along with a plethora of ceramic palettes, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of the ceramic palettes. I actually have to get an order in with them. I want to get some more. <clears throat> uh... Well, I was talking about Patreon, um, but you can just click join below the video and you can join right through uh, YouTube. So it, Joseph, to answer your question, that's what I was, that's what I was talking about because I was referencing my studio hangout, which is tomorrow. It's always the third Friday of the month. Kind of just helps keep me on track, although it has been a busy once mid one mid month hit January is usually like the longest month of the year, right? Or at least it feels that way. Not this year. January is just flying by me. And oh, as a reminder, next Thursday, <clears throat> unless something changes and it gets canceled, um, I will not be streaming because I have, um, I, I'll be under anesthesia that day. And so I am definitely not going to be streaming after I've been under anesthesia. All right. This one is very easy. Just a mild procedure. Nothing to be concerned about. Um, anyways, so this, this is super easy. You don't need to draw anything out. Um, 
we're going to do this really simple. Now, one of the two, you can do multiple things. You can either use something like this and do some masking and mask. And if I put glass beads in mine, if you're wondering what that noise is, if you guys can hear that, I put glass beads in mine to take up the airspace and help keep my masking fluids from drying out. And then I can just reuse those. Um, so you could use masking in the interest of time. And, and this was the way that Shelly did hers. Now, like I said, you can mask a circle for your sun. You could mask your birch trees wherever you want to put them. Another thing that you can do, um, I actually, Lou just picked these up. I had for my first one, when I did, when I did this one, I just used one of my round thank you stickers and it worked. It worked pretty well. I had a little bit of leak over here, but as you can tell, it, it doesn't matter. Rob, I don't think that, um, I don't think that your phone translated. He said he's, he's driving and it. it he's like talking and it's, translating for him. And, um, anyhow, I don't think that translated exactly right. Okay. So I had Lou pick me up some of these and they're just mailing seals and these are actually see-through. So I'm just going to pick where I want my son to be located. And so I'm going to put that right about there. Okay. And hopefully these will come off just fine. And if it doesn't, it's see-through. So we, it won't matter, right? Because we won't see it. It'll just be a shiny spot. <clears throat> My other one came off just fine. So I would imagine this will too. I wasn't expecting them to be plastic when I asked him to pick me up. I described what I wanted. And we went there earlier today too, and I just completely forgot. So then I want some pieces of masking, right? But I don't want like just straight Trees are not rigid. So I am going to place this. There we go. <clears throat> there we go. And I'm going to do three, three trees. I'm going to do this just like my other one. And I think thought when I saw, um, Shelly do hers this way, I thought that is brilliant. Uh, I've shown you guys before where I've ripped it and this is just a little more polished. So I can take my pieces of masking and what did I do with it somewhere? I just, I literally just used it earlier. Oh, there it is. It just fell down a little further. Okay, and I'm gonna take a craft knife. Now I will say I was not happy with this masking earlier, but it is my wider masking. Um, so I'm just gonna use it again. It ended up being fine and I'll show you what I meant about I wasn't happy or why I wasn't happy with it earlier. So we're just going to make some trees. We're gonna do the edges of the tree. And I'll just pull that off so I can see what I'm working with. Throw that piece away. And birch trees like to bend. So don't be afraid to let them get a little wonky. There we go. So there's a tree. Um, now the bottom of it, you can choose. You can have it rough like this. Like Shelly did hers like she cut um an angle let me just show you that is like if i don't cut it it just kind of lets the snow build up on the tree in maybe a more a little bit natural way versus if i cut i cut a nice line but here i it, it just went a little different but you can decide you can leave it however it was torn or you can cut it like this one is weird we're gonna we'll cut that one Okay, and 
don't worry about having a steady hand. Okay, see, a little bit of little bit of wonkiness to the edge is exactly what you need. And then I just kind of try to mimic a little bit. But again, not worrying about if I'm not exact. And there's another tree. It's a little wider right there. If there's something that you don't like about it, you know, become an arborist and um, trim the tree. There we go. We're just going to go with it. <laughs> Georgia, tree lady is painting trees. I'm going to get a reputation. I got to be careful. All right. And so I have a thin one. I mean, this one I'm going to kind of stick, let it go pretty wide. There we go. See, I, I just, I saw this technique and I couldn't resist George. I had to give it a try. All right. So now for the bottoms, I'm going to just kind of, oh, I can keep that on there. Can you guys see? Yeah, you can see what I'm doing. All right. Let's give that the bottom. Maybe it looks like the snow just piled up. And then. This one, I'm just going to take a little bit of that off. There we are. I'm going to leave that one just the way it is so you can see the difference. All right. <clears throat> now we have to put these all in our paper. Oh, great question, George. This green piece is one that you guys have seen me use many times. Uh, this is just a cutting mat I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be mixing today on a ceramic plate that I got from the Dollar Tree. And then my ceramic plate is sitting on a Lazy Susan that I found today at the Dollar Tree. And I just thought, well, that would be great when I'm, you know, when I mix colors and I try to, all of a sudden I'm off screen and you guys can't see it. I can just kind of turn that around and you'll get, you guys will be able to see what I'm doing. But we do have another view today and another angle. And I can actually see my son really well when I check in my monitor. When I'm looking down at my paper, I don't see it. It's just kind of disappeared. So yeah, it's just a cutting mat. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to put my wider tree. Now, I don't want to put these trees to the bottom. You see here, they are in my foreground, but they're up a little ways. And these were slightly back, just a little further than this one. And... They're your trees, so you set them in your painting how you want. But so I have my sun, and I'm going to put a single to this side. And we'll let him grow right about there. Now, when I wet this masking the last time, it just, it got all wrinkly, and I just went with it. And it actually worked out just fine. Okay. And then on this side, so my son is here. Kind of thinking about my composition, how I want my trees to be, where I want them. Do I want them back one back a little further than the other? And I think I do. I wanted them that way in the other one. It just didn't quite work out that way. They actually ended up looking like they were almost right in the same, like right in the same area, which was fine. <clears throat> I have not seen that. Maybe I don't want to, Joseph. Can I just stay blissfully like unknowing about whatever it is that you're talking about? Okay, and then this one I'm going to place, and birch trees do like to grow in clumps or clusters. We have a group of, actually it's three and a sap, three young trees and a sapling. 
think I'm going to put them just like that. Maybe this one will be a little bit further. No, I think I want to, no, I'm going to, the way that I had it. So they're kind of touching, they, like they've started growing out of the same area. There we go. We're just going to go just like that. Let's not overthink it. Okay. Now, the next thing we have to do, we have our birch trees mapped out. We have our sun mapped out. Put my cutting mat aside. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next thing we need is a horizon line. So, it's snowy. Oh, and let me show you. I said I was going to show you the inspiration. So, this was sunset here yesterday and this actually is not doing it justice this became like beautiful pinks and orange and yellow and it was just gorgeous and you'll see in the center there where it's at its brightest point you see how it's like changing the color of the trees we're gonna go for that I mean you can't see it we're going to achieve that and this was something that um Shelly also did in her video is adjusting the color of the tree that is by the sun. And we're going to put in our shadows. Um, we're going to do all this step by step and it really is easy. So yeah, but if you see here, looking at like the center where it's the brightest, those colors are definitely affected. And sometimes that sun is so bright that you almost can't even see the trees in that, you know, if you're looking right at the sun, you can't even see that part of the tree that's there because it's just so bright from behind it. It just completely blows it out. So we're going to go for that to help really brighten up and illuminate this area. Um, but first we need to put in where our horizon is going to be. So not halfway, but just a little bit above the halfway point. It's really, really simple. All right. My sun is here. So I'm going to want my horizon to be right about here. Okay. So I'm just going to do, and I'm letting this kind of, I'm not keeping it flat. I'm adding a little, little wave to that line there. <laughs> Yeah, it actually, actually it is Tara, because you have the reflection, um, you have the reflection, if, if you have snow, you have the reflection off the snow and the trees are bare. So you don't have the darkness of all the leaves and everything else in the sky to kind of help offset that. And, um, yeah, snow blindness is actually a thing. Yeah, safety warning. And <laughs> we do not recommend looking directly at the sun. <laughs> Please don't do that. No. Thank you, Joseph, for the for dropping that in the chat for us. <clears throat> no, we definitely don't recommend looking right at the sun. Okay. I'm going to take you, we're going to look at a new view today. Let's jump over here. All right. That way there, I can get you more close up. So if you see here, and I might need to bring it to you just so you can see just laid that line in just a little wonky. It's fine. It's that's it back there. Done deal. Okay. Just kind of let it be what it is. You make your horizon however you want it to be. All right. Not even with sunglasses. No, not even with sunglasses on Tara says. <clears throat> All right. Today I'm using my Princeton Neptune brushes because I thought, you know what? I like never get to use these brushes and this was going to be a great painting um, to give them a go. All right, I'm just adding some water. You see me down here in the corner, just spritzing a little extra water into these colors. I want them to be plenty wet. All right, we're going to work this in multiple steps. Now, our first step was masking out our area, putting in our horizon. So that's done. Our next step is going to be to paint our sky and maybe put in a little bit of the sky color into our snow. So like our pinks and purples. 
<clears throat> if you see here, I put a little bit of the uh, pinks and purples, yellows and pinks. I put a little bit of that in here. Um, you can, the snow is white. It's going to reflect, it's going to reflect our sky color. Uh, in here, I'm using some of the sky color to do our shadow. I saw the other day, it was like perfect. It looked like a painting. The snow, the shadow areas looked so blue and it was gorgeous. And did I take a picture? No, I was too in awe actually looking at it present in the moment and I, I did not take a picture of it. So there's that. <clears throat> okay, so I'm grabbing my uh, one inch modeler brush and I'm just gonna use this to wet my background and I did not change my water before the stream. That's the one thing I forgot to do but I do have some clean water, so we're good. We're just gonna keep right on going. All right, I was just turning my paint box so the brushes it was holding were out of my way. All right, we're just going to wet right over our tape or masked off trees and sun. Gonna wet the top of that. I am using cotton paper. And I'm going to give this a good soak so it gets nice and wet. And just I need to let that absorb in for a moment or two. And while it is doing that, you see that is very wet. I put a light on. Well, I was hoping that that light was what was like helping you guys see some of the wetness on the paper. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Yeah, I never pull the, yeah, you don't like, I do that sometimes, but I don't think there's anything wrong with being present in the moment for sure. Um, I just have a rag up here and sometimes you guys aren't really seeing that on camera, but I am going to be dabbing. When I rinse my brush, you will see me kind of dab here. I just want to make sure that I'm not putting a bunch of water into my color. Cause once I mix my color, that's the color that I'm going to uh, want to have. So I don't want to flood because if I put, have more water on my brush, when I go back to my color, then my color is going to keep getting lighter and that's not exactly what I want. So I will let you know when we do want our colors lighter and when we don't see my tape is starting to crinkle and it's just cause the water's on it and it's cheap tape. So all right, I am taking my number six quill. You could also just use, actually, maybe I will. I will use my, that's going to hold a ton of water. I'm going to use my number 10 round. And I'm going to start with my cad free yellow. Any warm yellow would be fine. Okay, so there's my cad free yellow. That's a lot. I didn't need that much. I really didn't, but that's okay. I am going to take this now and I want to dilute it. So I'm actually going to pull off a little bit here with the water that's on my brush because I want that diluted. And I have a lot of water on my paper, so this is definitely going to dilute even more. And I'm just going to go around my mask off sun and just get some warmth in there. Okay just like that. Now we can't, and, and actually, you know what? I'm going to pull some of this out because in my sunset, which I, it's on the other, it's on the other view. Uh, mine kind of spread out and that's the way I want this to work. Now we can't go right to blue because of course that's going to make green. Our sky's not green. So I'm going to come over here to alizarin crimson. Uh, you could use alizarin crimson or any cool red, like a carmine. A carmine would work beautifully too. I just want a cool red because from here I'm going to blue. So I'm going to pull some of this around my edges. I'm just pulling this out. I want to leave this area yellow closest to. And I did touch that a little bit, but I'll show you. That's not a big deal. Okay. 
I don't want to come down too far below, like my, it's touching my horizon right now. I don't want to go below that line. <clears throat> Clean water and you see, I just kind of tap it on my towel. So now for my right around, we're just going to take a, just a damp brush, and pull some of that out. Maybe we'll bring a little bit more yellow back in here. I got to be careful because I'm pulling my red in and I want a nice clean brush. Tap that to dry, get the water out of it. <laughs> yes, Sauron's eye. Um, if you're, if you watch, uh, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan. All right, I'm going to put just a little bit more yellow because this is going to dry lighter. A little bit more yellow in there. There we go. All right. And I'm just dabbing the water and color off of the, um, where it's taped. So I am getting the edge because if there's any extra pooling right there, I don't want that to sit and leave me a darker ring around my sun. All right. Next thing we have to do, I'm just going to turn these colors away. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our, um, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Okay. And winter, winter is not like, I mean, sometimes, yeah, we do have bright blue skies, but I want this to feel like winter. So I'm going to take some of my paints gray and I'm just going to mute that ultramarine blue down a bit. Okay. And I want to lighten that up. So just grabbing some more clean water on my brush and bringing that in. And again, my paper's still wet, so it's going to dilute even more when it gets to my paper. All right, here we go. We're going to paint in around, and we're going to let these colors kind of mix and mingle. That's even just slightly darker than I want. So I'm going to just grab a clean brush and I'm just going to come over that again with a clean brush and keep working that down to my horizon. Now when I come back for more, I'm just going to dilute, pull a little bit of this color to the side so that the water on my brush dilutes that a little bit further and that will give us a lighter value. Going right along my horizon. My paper feels like it's drying very quickly. I'm just kind of pulling through some of that, um, where our alizarin crimson was. Again, I don't want to work it too much because I don't want to get into the yellow and make a green. And I think we're just going to leave it be. So there is the color of our sunset. <clears throat> now, if I come down here into my snow, I'm going to come through the middle. I am not going to touch this line because I don't want to push water up into that and cause a bloom into my sky. And I don't want it to bleed down into my snow. So I'm just going to wet an area just below where that is. And I'm going to wet in here just a little bit. And then I'm going to come back to my alizarin crimson 
and just pick up a little bit. And where I'm seeing it here, I'm going to bring a little bit through on my snow. Now that looks dark. If it looks dark to you, just wet your brush. I'm wiping it off and that's going to dilute it some. Okay. We don't want a lot of color. We just want a hint of color, just a little bit of blush on the page. We can do the same with our yellow. And now here I'm going to pull, I'm going to put just, I've got water from my brush on my palette. And I'm just going to pull in the tiniest, I barely touched that yellow. This is a cad yellow. It's cad free, but it's still a cad yellow. It's going to be very strong. I see my yellow mostly over here. I'm going to put just a little bit there. Okay. Just a little bit in these areas. That's it. I want this to dry now. Okay. In fact, we want the entire, the entire thing to dry. So I'm going to grab my dryer. We're going to give this a quick dry so that we can, uh, this needs to be completely dry. This is a time where you could walk away, go have a snack, go do something, um, and then come back to your painting because you do want this to be completely dry before the next step. like something I don't know what on earth that is that's on my paper I have no idea what got on my paper but I'm not gonna worry about it it's it's not gonna be a problem it'll disappear it is definitely nothing to get concerned about <clears throat> okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to get some distant trees in here. And the reason that we wanted this to dry first is because we need to re-wet our paper now. And when we re-wet our paper, we really need the layer below to be dry. So we don't disturb and mix um, and you know mess up the beautiful sunset we just painted. So I'm again, I'm going to take my one inch modeler brush. You could use a flat. Uh, you could use a quill for this. You could use a very large round. Uh, use what you have, you know, for wetting your backgrounds. And I'm going to come through right at my horizon line. And I'm going to wet my paper again. I don't want a lot of brush strokes because again, I don't want to disturb the paint that is underneath, but I am going to wet it all the way to the top. And the reason I'm wetting it all the way to the top is because I also don't want to cause a bloom to go up into that area. So I need to wet that whole space. All right, now we're going to do our distant trees and let me just jump back over, jump back over here for a minute so that I can show you when we look at the, the trees, like winter trees, there's going to be, we can put some green in the background, but if you look at my, now I'm moving my mouse. Like you can see my mouse moving on the screen. You can't, if you look at the line of trees, that's really close to where the snow line is on my photograph, they're really gray. Um, now depending on where you live here in Maine, it's gray and green. Um, because we have, you know, evergreens that are green all year long and then everything else looks pretty gray. <clears throat> all the deciduous trees have dropped their leaves and it's kind of gray. I want to warm this up and let me jump back over here. 
And to warm that up, I can put some, a little bit of browns in there. You don't have to do that. So that's just a suggestion. You do it however you want to, but we are going to do um, some gray. You see, I put some green in here. I definitely have the gray here, just like you saw in my, um, one of those reference photos, that I, the reference photo I, I took that I shared with you. Okay. So this is what I want my burnt sienna. My burnt sienna might be a little dirty because I was mixing this earlier. Now my burnt sienna and my Payne's gray are going to give me a nice neutral tint. See there? Uh, my Payne's gray is a little cooler and more blue in the Winsor Newton. Um, I really kind of want something that's a little bit more like that. So we can come through and I can just touch in and we're literally just right along the horizon, right? This is going to give us uh, some nice separation of color. Okay. Kind of my hand went a little crazy and I touched that and just readjusting my horizon line here. That doesn't look like it's moving as much as I would want it to. So I'm just going to grab a little mister and just put a little mist in there. And that will just kind of help this section move around a bit. The only thing that's not going to be good, I should have blocked off my snow because it may also creep into my snow by doing that. It's just snow. <laughs> Block off your snow, put something down if you're going to spray a mist. And, you know, we would just go like this. Block that off. Make sure I'm pointing it at my painting. And just give it a little mist. And that'll help that kind of move. Right, so that mist should be in there. I can even touch and remember your watercolor is going to dry lighter than it looks. And I'm seeing it wick up this tape and that happened to me before too, which is one of the reasons like if I were going to do this again, I'd probably mask these off with masking just so that it can't wick that dark color. That dark color has now traveled all the way up the tape. You see it to there. Um, it did that before with the other trees. Um, I was able to work around that, <clears throat> but all right, let's also bring in, we're going to need some green. And I'm actually going to take some of this, uh, neutral tint that I just made and I'm going to bring it in because I want a nice dark gray green and we're going to just drop some green in here and there. Wherever, wherever you think a happy little tree lives. All right, maybe that one's in front. And of course, as Bob used to say, he needs a friend. Everybody needs a friend. Okay. I could just leave it like this. And in fact, I think mm, I, I still want a little bit more warmth. Just a little bit more, just to kind of, yes, it's winter and it's going to be cool, but I'm just going to warm it up just a little bit. Maybe a little bit of umber. And we're just going to put a few spots in there.
You see how this just kind of starts to move and spread out all on its own. These are very, very, very distant. Very distant trees. There we go. Good enough. That's all we need. Okay. So the next thing we need to do, this has to dry again before we can come in on top of it. But what we can work on is the bottom part. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm liking what I'm seeing going on here right now, but this is what we ended up with last time. And actually, I think I'm going to come in here. You see where I had some of this lighter? I think I'm going to come in and bring that aspect in. The way that I did that was I just really watered down. that um, burnt sienna. Sorry, brain just stopped talking. Right. And really diluted that so that I have a very pale, too much water on my brush. Right? You see these further in the distance, and perhaps the sun is really uh, washing those out. And maybe we got a few back here. Right? That really gray. Just giving the impression of trees. And you see all I'm doing is just tapping this stuff in. Just tap it in there. You just have to give the brain 90%. It will fill in the rest. Okay. I'm just going to let that be. Oh, look at how this is like, can you guys see that coming into this palette? That's pretty neat looking. I'm not sure if I can show you that a little closer. You guys like the magic that happens on your palette. It's just the way that the kind of the one color in the water kind of flooded into the other area. Sorry for moving you around if that bothers you. All right, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so the next part we need to do is we need to work on our shadows. Our shadows and our snow. This is super easy. Okay, so here is, we want this white void to all of a sudden look like it's snow. Okay. So that's what we're doing now. We're going to take, and again, we are not, we're going to try to avoid touching our horizon line here, our, this line of our snow, because we don't want this to bleed down into this space. But in the interest of being able to continue working, we're going to wet. And you can see here, my lines are a little straighter, a little crisper back there. That's because when I set them in, I put went into the space where I hadn't put water. So we want to come up as close as we can without touching. Okay, so we're going to wet the bottom part of our paper. And again, this has dried. So our sunset colors that are in our snow are going to be fine. And if we cover over some of those, I have a fuzz on my random must have been in my brush or something there's like a little little hair a little I thought I was what is it? whatever all right um if we paint over some of where our pink is and our our yellow we're not going to worry about it too much 
Now, last time I put my shadows in first. I'm just tipping this so that I can see, um, so I can get the glare, the water, and know that I am not touching where that paper's wet. <laughs> yeah, artificial kitty glitter. For sure. Okay. And tipping this just lets any excess water run to the bottom. I love this paper. I have been absolutely, everything I paint on this, I am really enjoying this meat and paper. Definitely recommend. Definitely recommend it. Okay. And see, it kind of, again, wicked up near where my trees are. I'm not going to. I'm not going to worry about that. If I did it again, I would use masking. But for today, I thought, you know, beginner friendly, masking tape is probably something everybody would have, whereas everybody might not have masking fluid. Okay, so what we need to do now is remember the blue we mixed up for our sky. That's what we want reflecting in our snow, just like we did with some of the pink yellow colors. So we're going to come in here. And this is drying already on my palette. I want a very light mixture of this. And we're just going to, and I said light, and that looks quite dark. So I'm just going to rinse my brush. Not going to let it worry me and come back over that. There's some shadow going through there. I'll actually pull this back up and maybe put it, put some elsewhere. So we have our shadows in our snow. Okay. Don't overthink it. We just want some shadowy areas. This is going to lighten as it dries. Okay. Now we need our shadows for our trees. We want to put these in at the exact same time as we are putting down the shadow for our snow. Because this is all going to be the same color. We wouldn't want to put the, um, just putting a little bit more maybe over here. We wouldn't want to put the shadow and then have you know, a darker, like on top, we want it to be all the same. All right. So our trees, the sun is what is casting our shadow. So we want to make sure that all of our trees are going to, the shadow is going to point back to the sun. So regardless of where our tree is, that shadow is going to, everything's going to fan out and it is going to point back to the sun, which you can, and see here, everything points to the sun. Okay. So what we need to do is we are going to take our shadow color. I don't have trees there yet. Right. But this is going to tell me where my trees are going to go. So I know I'm going to want to put one here so that we can really emphasize that glow. We want to really put light into our painting. Right now, that doesn't look like there's a lot of light in our painting. How do we get that? We need to add some darkness. So that is another one Bob used to say. You can't have light without dark and you can't have dark without light. Right? So we're going to end up with a tree over there. I'll just pull that down and then perhaps it has a friend right here. Okay. And If I put like, if I make it branch off and my paper may, it may be a little too damp to do this right now still, because I'm seeing it just kind of like really bleeding out, but we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to go, we're just going to go with it. Okay. And then I'm going to have another one over here. 
right? So I'm pointing toward to the center of the sun. And the other thing I'm going to think about is if I put a tree here and I want to make a branch go off that way, then its shadow is going to go off this way. Okay, so we'll make a tree with branch that way. I kind of did that here too. It's, it's all kind of blending together, but that's okay because that, it's so far away and look at how far it's come down. Oh, thank you. Rob has gifted 10 memberships. If you are here in the chat, you may get one of those. Simone Mack was gifted a membership from Rob. Uh, Joseph Fincham was gifted a membership, Fab Five. D. Lynn Creative Arts, Susan Stack, Jamie Sees, uh, Agneta uh, Brogdon, Bailey, Teresa Brown, and the Fluffy Cat. And to yeah, Teresa Brown, I think I said that. Yes, I did. Congratulations. So you were all gifted a membership from Rob. So we're just going to keep pulling out some shadows. You see, I'm painting right over where my lines are. Now here, I have the tape where my um, birch trees are going to be. I know if I follow the sun, I'm going to have shadow, right? My birch tree is definitely going to ca cast a shadow. So I certainly want to paint those in. So from the center of the sun, we're going to have it cast shadow out here. Again, this one is going to cast a shadow out here. I have a little bit of a space in here because you notice I have a little bit of a space in here. So we're going to just leave that be and make sure we can incorporate that into it. So there's our shadow and let's get some more trees for our background. Uh, another, another thing you can do is I'm not going to have trees. Like I want trees farther forward, right? I don't want them all to be way back here. So I might think, Oh, here's pointing to my son. Maybe I have a tree going to live right there. Okay. And that's a little dark. If you get someone that's a little dark like that, you can always just damp brush and lift a little bit of that out and that'll lighten it right up. Oops. Clean water. So I ran out of some of my diluted shadow color here. So I have one there. How about another one? This one's going to come even further out. Maybe it comes out here. I'm varying the size. And I'm going to come back over these now that my paper's dried a little bit more. See if we can't define that shadow a little better. That looks like a huge tree. I'm going to just dab a little bit of that up. I've gotten a little bigger than I want. There we go. We just let that be what it is. But we can put some more. Maybe I have some, again, if I think about my son. Pull some out this way. Um, maybe some cross. There's some back here. I'm doing different, right? Different sizes, putting trees in different locations. Perhaps we have a tree again there. So perhaps we have a tree that we'll put in here. This kind of got a little blurry. 
because I was putting in a tree back here. Maybe it has a branch that goes off like that. Okay, and perhaps we'll put another about like that. Okay, there's some shadows. So now I still have some pinks in there. Um, I'm really wishing that these would have, I'm gonna dry this just a little bit. just because I want a shadow for these trees. They're gonna be in front of my That does not follow the rule. See, uh, pulling this down is not how it would be. It would always come off the sun. I'm not even gonna put one there, but maybe we put it like that. Okay. And this one that got away from me a little bit. Okay. Well, those are really definitely some just lightening them up just a little bit. All right. <clears throat> They're coming from way back there. Okay. Okay. We got Rob and Tara having a snowball fight. <laughs> I'm going to give this a quick dry because next we're going to paint in our trees to go along with our shadows. And I got a hard line here and I'm going to show you how you can take care of that. I'm just going to grab, um, this is just an angled shader. It's a tack on brush, but I'm going to get that wet and just with a damp brush, it's just damp. I've blotted it on there. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to soften that edge and just lift out a little bit. It was just a really hard line that I was not liking. I don't want to scrub it too much, but I just definitely didn't like the hard line. Just working in little circles and just going to lift that. And I'm, I'm blotting to lift because I don't want to leave that water there. Um, and then have that push that paint and cause another hard line. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next we need to put in our trees. I, I've, going to take my sun off because when I put in these trees, I have to come through the sun. So I want to remove. Oh, that removed so easily. Look at that. That, that removed, that was worked like a dream. They're like plastic 
little mail seal mailing seals is what they're called. Oh, I just had Lou grab these for me at the dollar store. Okay. Next up, um, and also like right here, you see how there's like that harsh, harder line. You could also soften that if you wanted to. You would want to take a damp brush and just kind of come around. I'm not going to touch it. I am not touching it. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I'm not even risking messing anything up. We are not going to go there. I'm just going to leave it alone. All right. <clears throat> For this area, we want to come back to like our burnt sienna. So I want my burnt sienna. I move that closer to you guys where the camera is. And I'm going to want that diluted, right? I want the, I want the warmth. I'm going to take just a touch of my cad yellow. Uh, so just a touch of your warm yellow and adding that to that, but it's very thin. This is like a very watery mixture. I don't want that to be very dark at all, but here I'm going to paint. We're going to start with the one furthest to my left because I'm right-handed. I don't want to put my hands through the paint. And you see that this, I'm going to start with one that goes up. Now I have it going up and then I have a branch off this way. And it goes up and branches off that way. Okay. You see, it's very transparent where we're coming through the sun right here. All right. While that's still wet, I'm going to come over into this really dark, like neutral tint that I had. I'm going to mix up some more of that. So if you don't remember how we got there, don't worry. We're going to do it again in a moment. And I'm going to drop this in the bottom. Now, now I'm working wet and wet. So that will travel up as it dries. And I'm going to come down. And that will travel down into that space as it dries. So it'll be nice and soft. Oh, have a great rest of your day, Teresa. Thanks for hanging out with us. So I'm going to repeat that same process. Okay. And this is one of the ones that I said, Shelly Pryor, um, she did the same type of technique. Now, see, I have a space here. I'm going to have to really, I'm going to have to kind of, yeah, that's, I should have brought this tree more this way. I leaned it a little too far to the right, but that's all right. We're just going to, we're just going to go with it. And this one kind of goes straight up. And so again, I need to mix up some more of the color I'm using. It is just a touch of my um, burnt sienna with just a tiny bit of my cad yellow or your warm yellow. And we want that to be a really watered down mixture. And I want to get some of that water out of my brush so that when I come in here, I'm just picking up this color that I've mixed up. trees growing wider by the moment. Okay. So right up through, and then I'm going to grab my darker color, drop this in the bottom and bring it down from the top. There we go. And trees do not see how I have this weird downward spot. Trees don't grow like that. All right, it's a little top heavy, that tree. That's okay. We can make them a little wider. And then back to my yellow or my sienna mixture. So I can make that tree a little bit wider. Now look at how much brighter that sun is already looking. All right, I have one more that I have to do. 
he goes a little like this. Goes right up through here. And you see this one I have just kind of to the right of the sun. It's not going to be as transparent as the other one. So I'm going to take my Payne's Gray color that I made up. And I'm really going to come down the entire right side of my tree. Right? So it's just really bright on that left side. So all I did was just do a line right down the right side of my tree. And then the left side is going to stay really bright and illuminated from the sun. Oh, thanks, Veronica. I'm glad. And again, um, when we get to the birch trees, that is a technique, which I definitely give credit where credit is due. That is a technique that I saw first from Shelly Pryor, Fine Art. And she, her, that video is actually linked in the description below. That it is her technique. Well, I don't know if it's her technique, but I saw her do it. Um, and definitely wanted to give it a try. So for complete transparency there. Um, that's where this idea, as far as for the trees, came from. I just need to clean a little bit of this off because I don't want that green necessarily coming into this. I mean, it wouldn't matter if it was really dark, if it had some green in it. It wouldn't matter. We're going to do these trees out here. <clears throat> um, I just found her. Uh, YouTube just suggested her to me for the first time um, the other day. And I was like, where have I been? How, how have I not known about Shelly's channel? So we went down the rabbit hole with a little bit of watching there and was really enjoying some of the stuff she did. And then seeing the sunset here yesterday, I knew I just had to try. Sorry, bring that camera there. Okay. So that I didn't talk us through that. Uh, I took the Payne's gray. And I wanted something that was a little closer to black or like a warm black. And so I added in some of my burnt sienna. And that gave me this darker, warmer color. And that's what we're going to paint the rest of our trees with. So now I'm going to start again from my left because I'm right-handed. I don't want to stick my hand in the paint because I would do that. Um... Looking where I have marks, right, I'm just going to paint in some trees. And if this is actually, this actually might be a little, I'm going to lighten that up just a little bit. I can always go back and do them again. My waters are just getting really dirty. So I'm coming back over this. And you guys don't see me use Neptune brushes often. They're very soft. If you're not sure that you see when I press with that, look how much that brush just stays bent over. Uh, I'm trying to think. I do have some sunsets here on the channel. So if you just... Um, Search Clark Fine Art Sunset. If I do have one, it should it should show up. Um, I do live in Lake Lake Country, so chances are, if that's something you're interested in, we could always definitely put that on the agenda for this summer when the weather warms up and the lakes thaw and we have water again, not ice. All right, so we're coming, and so I'm just looking at where. I put shadows. Okay, see that's too much too much water. It's gonna make a bloom. So I need more more pigment, less water. Okay. 
you oh absolutely yes veronica um you could if you don't follow me on social media i am at clark fine art on youtube or on MeWe. um on instagram i am at clark underscore fine art but everywhere else it's at clark fine art I mean, absolutely if there's a picture that um you have of a sunset on a lake i would love to take a look and maybe that's something we could do a future tutorial on okay And this one I definitely have branch off to the side. See, I'm following this right here. But yeah, Princeton Neptune brushes are very soft. They, they are not a snappy brush at all. Um, I would say that they are softer than my silver black velvets. <clears throat> So here you see I have the, the shadow that I put in there and it doesn't reach the background. This is one that we have to have more forward. So you're going to put that in right here. I'm not going to worry if it goes over my other one. And I am seeing through that and I don't want to. We don't want to see through trees. So we definitely need to mix up. There we go. Oh, hit my camera again. Just mixing up a darker, darker mixture. More paint, less water. And we're just going to bring that down. Now we're not going to see through that so much. Now we've got one down here, so we're going to put it in. Put that one in. Paint that right, right up through. It's going to go a little bit behind my birch tree, and that's fine. There we go. Next, if I'm following along, I've got one here and I'm going to make this one just be a little bit darker. Perhaps just come down that left side. Still a little damp, so that's going to kind of spread over. But if it's lighter on this side, the sun's there, so that's just going to look natural. can put in a few extras in the background. It's fine if they don't all have that mark. Maybe that one's like off out of the picture. Okay. So we have one here. I'm going to need that. See right there. So I'm going to need that to be a little bit lighter. Let me rinse my brush out. This water's pretty dirty. I could probably paint with that water right now. With the water I have on my brush, just pulling a little bit of that color over. And we're going to put, maybe this one sits into the snow here. More forward. Right off our page. And I want that a little bit darker. Not quite so light. You see, I just, all I did was dabbed, 
down along the right side of that tree. Okay, so now we have one here. I'm going to let that one dry though. So I'm going to come back to this one and let that one set for a little bit. I have a nice thin one here. And then we can get darker. We're further away from our sun over here. So let's go ahead and that looks kind of straight, but we're going to make it come right up in between these in the background. Okay, now here's where we had some that kind of crisscrossed over. So if it went this way, we're just going to make it go a little bit this way. Oh, thanks, Tara. Yeah, Veronica, I love to paint water. I love to paint sunsets. Um, I, I just, I like landscapes. And if you ask George Pencil Art, I love to paint trees. <laughs> Okay, look at those trees in the background. Now, see, we have one here, which that one's still drying. I think I can get away with putting this one in. Let's put that one in now. And it may go right up over one of the ones I've already done. It's all right. We're not going to worry about that. In fact, maybe this one, we'll take a little bit of this. Let's reactivate our black sienna. And drop a little bit of that warmth on that left side of that tree. We might need to get a little bit more. Let's just drop that down. It's gonna kind of blend and move, but just a little bit more warmth on that side. And I'm gonna need some more. So again, paints gray, which do you see how this looks so blue? Can you see how blue that looks? very blue. So to counteract that, let me just bring that over here. Very blue. I'm just going to I really should have got some more water. You can never have enough water when you're water painting. And I'm going to come into my burnt sienna. Right. And we're just going to mix that in and look how much that just warms it up and takes it from that cool paints gray to like a warm black. So that's the color we're going for. I hope that helps. And this is a very creamy mixture of paint. And I'm just going to come down this right side. This is tree is still very wet. So it's going to It'll mix and kind of move on that tree, but that now gives me more warmth on this left side and definitely darkens up the shadow side, side furthest from the sun. All right, let's look at this one right here. Our sun is right there. That's going to be pretty dark. It's kind of mid ground. So that one's going to be pretty dark. We're going to go ahead and, um, I think I want to put one in here. You see how this kind of this shadow, it's been bugging me. We're going to come back to that in a second. My brain just went, oh, I know what to do with this. I need just a little bit of water in here, a little bit creamier. Um, if you're liking the camera on the palette, please drop me a comment and let me know. And if you are enjoying the video today, uh, please hit that like button because it definitely definitely helps 
and it tells YouTube, hey, I like this. And you know what? Other people who like the same kind of thing I like might also enjoy to watch it. Okay, so this one we have coming down and we definitely have, um, it branches off to one side. Now I think if I would have been paying attention that I would have painted the first part of this a little differently. That's okay. There we go. Oh, excellent. Sheila says, yes, the palette cam is nice. I am just taking my tissue and I'm touching right along where this other tree is because I want a little bit more separation so you can tell we have two trees here. Now, once this is all dry, I could even add a little bit more warmth into that one in the background if I want to, but it's really far away, so we're not really going to see that. But I just definitely wanted a separation between the trees there. Okay, let's go to this shadow was bugging the heck out of me because it got all kind of wonky and I'm just going to say there's a tree here. I'm going to paint it right through just like that. It's a leaner. I, I, I feel like my trees are kind of leaning. I don't know why. Maybe we'll adjust this tree so it's not leaning so much. Now I'm just going to bring that right, right down there. Um, we'd have a little bit more shadow that goes that way. It's fine. Letting it go. This is me letting it go. I promise. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is really, uh, Jacqueline, I'm glad that you said that. A lot of people, um, trees are intimidating. And we're about to really explore this technique for these birch trees that I was just like, this, oh, and I, look what I did. I just have a line here. We don't want that. We want to come into this part of the painting. I'm going to have to put another tree over here to break this up. Um, I just looked at my, see, I looked at my monitor and there's the tip. Um, if I hadn't put this one in, it, we might've got away with it, but I did. And now it's there and I can't unsee it. I looked up at my monitor and sure enough, a line took me right off and this is taking me right off my painting. We don't want that. Um, so yeah, trees are something that a lot of people get intimidated with. I used to get intimidated, uh, with painting and, and I'm still working on like, if I had to put leaves on all these trees, that might be a whole other, whole other topic, but I'm going to put one in right here. I think I can get away with adding the shadow and kind of matching my color. So yeah, just be aware of that. If you're putting, if you're putting in some trees, don't, don't paint the viewer off your, out of your painting. And again, see this paint's gray. All right, Sienna, give us a nice warm black. Okay. 
I hope that this definitely, um, that's a little, that's a little better. We, we need to come here. I feel like this is really heavy and this needs more balance. Uh, I think we're going to put one more in over here somewhere. This painting got a lot more trees than the other one. That is for sure. We'll put one here. Yeah, we'll put one here. I think, I think we can... Sorry, concentration just took me. I think we can get the, um, add the shadow in. But again, you can put your trees wherever you want. I just want my birch trees to be the trees that are most forward. I feel like I need one more over here somewhere and I'm trying to decide like, where do I want you to stand? Right? Like where, where do you live? You live right there. Maybe he lives right there. Is right there. It's getting a little wonky. Alright, I will come back and put shadow in on those after. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. It's going to be really simple. I and mean, we're just going to take our shadow color, we're just going to really mute it down and just pull the line from those and uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so Jacqueline says tree scary for some reason, but this isn't so scary. I'm glad, I'm glad that this is not very scary. Uh, are you ready to have some fun? Let's, let's dry this. I'm gonna dry this, put those shadows in real quick. And then we're going to paint our birch trees and our birch trees are gonna paint up very quickly and then we're going to be done. All right, so I'm gonna grab some water. I'm gonna come into put the water from my brush on my palette and I'm just gonna pull a little bit of this shadow color into it. And then gently pull that right off my page. This one's a little trickier. It's not gonna come all the way through because these trees are gonna block that. So I just need to come to the tree. There we go. And we need our guy over here. And this one really should be a little bit more, because remember we got to point towards the sun. A little bit not really the way I wanted it but let's just darken up our shadow where our birch trees are closest to us maybe that will also help Again, remembering I want to leave some separation there because we can see through our trees up here. All right. 
just going to leave that be. All right, quick dry on that, and I'm going to remove my tape. So I'm going to use my heat tool to dry this and loosen up um, our tape. And we're going to paint our birch trees in, and we are going to call this one done. All right, again, this was, <clears throat> this was the technique that I saw Shelly do and I had to try. Oh, Rob, thank you. Rob has gifted 10 more memberships and those are just, they're coming through now. So we have Pale One, uh, Welder's World, MG, Kim Bernard, Horsewoman, Gabriel Design, excuse me, Gabrielle, Gabriella, my apologies, Designs, uh, Vadi Am Amatri, Susan, Mary, and Kimberly. Congratulations, you all were just gifted a membership from Rob. Okay. So it looks like I got a little bit of dark. I don't even know where that came from. Probably when I like did my tape, I got little speckles in there, but I could lift that later. Here we go. We're going to come in and we're going to wet right where our tree goes. Now, again, this was something that I saw Shelly do. This was her technique. This is the technique that I'm talking about that I was like, I, we have to try this. Okay, so we're going to wet our tree with some clean water, in my case, cleanish water. And you see how my tape, like it bled under a little bit. Don't even worry about that. Don't worry about it. But we want this area of our tree to be nice and wet because we're going to do this wet and wet. So wet paper, wet paint, it is going to diffuse the paint we put in it. It's just going to look beautiful. Okay. So we're going to take our burnt sienna and I want to take my burnt sienna. Now remember our watercolors dry much lighter. So don't be worried. Oh my gosh, these are birch trees. They're supposed to be white. It's going to look too dark. Don't worry. We're going to come down almost to the edge on the right side. And we are going to drop in. Just going to pull down this burnt sienna. It's going to be, it will move. It's going to spread a little bit. So it will get to the edge. Look at the warmth we just put in that side of the tree. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our shadow color. So let me rinse that burnt sienna out of my brush. And now I'm going to take my same shadow color that I put in my snow. Okay. And I'm going to come down the left side of my tree. And this only applies to the tree on the left. Okay, it's a little dark up there. We're just gonna rinse our brush out. I am wiping it off. I just wipe it off on my rag and I'm just gonna come back down. It's like lifting, right? We're just gonna come back down and soften that out. We have a nice cool shadow on this side of our tree. Now, now we need I want this not quite as warm as it was before. My paint's gray. 
a little bit of my burnt sienna. I don't want to go quite as warm. I still want to stay a little bit on the cool side, but I definitely want it to look more black than the blue gray of the paint's gray. If you have a black and you want to use black, that's fine. I'm just mixing mine because there isn't a black in this set. And again, we're using very limited colors here. So now with that mixture, I'm going to come down and just kind of dab down the center. What we're doing here is we are giving our tree its form. We're going to make this tree feel very round. I'm going to rinse that out. That's really dark. That's really dark. But again, same thing that I did with my shadow color. I'm just going to pull down through. Okay. Because my brush is wet, I am letting it reach all the way to the edge of my tree. And now that is watercolor and we're going to let it be watercolor and kind of mix and mingle. Okay. Okay. Now let's see this again. Only this time we're going to do it in reverse because these trees on the right side, we want the left side that's facing the sun to be our warm side. So to start with, we want to wet our trees. So we are going to wet these trees. And when I do my center color this time, I'm actually going to dilute it just a little bit. And that way there I won't have to pull through and it gives, it does give a, a really neat effect. Um, and I definitely encourage you if you have the time um, to check out, I did link her video in the description. Uh, check out the video where Shelly demonstrates this technique um, because it, it's really neat. It's really interesting. She's using a different a different brand of paint, I'm, I'm pretty sure, because her paints react a little different um, as they hit the water. Okay, so my trees are wet. I'm just touching here because I see that I touched my water into my shadow color and I don't want to cause a bloom right at the bottom of my tree. All right, into our uh, burnt sienna. And you can even take your burnt sienna and grab a touch of that cad yellow really warm that up and I'm just going to come down the left side pull that down the left side of my tree so really we're bringing the light into it's just helping illuminate and feel the warmth of that sunset. Like you can feel that sun. And again, on the left side of the tree. And we don't want our trees to look flat. We want them to be round. So we're going to go into our other side, rinse that out really well. <clears throat> All right, and I'm going to go into my shadow color. And with my shadow color, I'm going to pull that down on the right sides. Same thing on this one. I'm not too worried about that center there that I haven't touched because remember we're going to 
come back with our dark gray, almost black mixture. All right, so now let's make these round. Grab a little bit of this. Let me get that just a little bit more diluted. And we're going to kind of drop this in right down the center and let that kind of spread out. Same thing on this one. These Princeton Neptune brushes are so thirsty. They definitely hold plenty of paint. Look at that. Our tree starts to become round. And if it adds any striations, that's just going to add to the fact that it's a birch tree. And here I've got, it looks like the front part dried, like a little odd. I'm just going to come back down my brush from the top to the bottom. a little bit more of that warmth in here. Grabbing my burnt sienna, tiny bit of that tag yellow. We're just going to warm up the side of the tree. There we go. All right. We need this to dry. And then we are going to, and I, I told you guys what it was before. There is a name for these. Uh, I actually pinned it on a post before. There is a name for the black lines on a birch tree. Now I can't remember what they're called again. If you know what they're called, drop it in the chat. I'm just kind of going over that shadow again. I wanted that a little bit darker, but it's fine. If anything, I grab some wash and put some snow, some snow there, and that would be that would work too. Okay, we are almost there. I'm not going to worry if it's not 100% dry. If that moves a little bit and kind of, you know, feathers out, it's just going to add to the effect that you get uh, with the birch tree. But yeah, if anybody Google, uh, no, that's not what the word is. That might be, but that's not what the word is I'm thinking of. Uh, if, you, if you search, what are the black lines called on a birch tree? On a, or on a paper birch or a white birch. What are the black lines called on a white birch? Um, it is, I pinned it. I pinned it the last time I painted birch trees. I went back and pinned the comment of what they are called. I guess I'll have to do that again. Um, I want to say it starts with an S. I don't know. I'll know it the second I see it. I'll know. All right, so again, I've mixed up that really dark, um, not as warm. 
I'm not, I'm trying to go really kind of neutral with this, but black. Okay. No. <laughs> Joseph, they keep throwing them out there for me. And I'm like, nope, that's not it either. Uh, I can do this a couple different ways. Yes. Yes, Rob. L uh, lenticels. That is what they are called. That's what they're called. That is it. Thank you. Doesn't start with an S at all, but it ends with an S and I knew there was an S sound in there somewhere. <laughs> yes, Tara, that is, yes, you were correct. That is them. Okay. So I can either, I can do the, the striations a couple of ways. I can just take my brush with the paint and I took my glasses off, but I actually need my glasses for this part because we're going detail now. And I can just kind of let my brush skip across and do it like that. Uh, you could grab a card. It's just a piece of an old cut up card, gift card, credit card, whatever. And you could pull some across that way. Okay. You could use this to kind of get you started and then come back with the brush. Okay. If you're uncomfortable, um, putting them in all just by hand. Look at that. Many ways that you can do this. Okay. So we can scratch them in like that. I can actually paint them in. The brain wants to make patterns. Don't, don't let it. Uh, you're definitely going to want some coming from the left, some coming from the right. You're going to want them to be different. Remember our tree is round so don't undo all the hard work you just did making look how nice and round that tree looks you don't want to undo all that hard work so remember there it's it's round there we go just like that that one is done a uh, huge thank you to the moderators of the channel, Tara Giblin and Joseph Bincham. Both of them have channels, as I mentioned earlier. They are linked in the description. If you've never checked them out, uh, definitely I encourage you to do so. If you like live streams, Joseph live streams the first and third Monday of each month now. That was a lot of black on that one, but that's fine. So you never know what you're going to get when you do it with the card. And some of them can, it can look really, really natural. So the first and third Mondays of every month, we hang out there. I get to moderate on his channel to reciprocate and um, yeah, hang out and chat with all of you over there. Look at that. I actually really like that one. Now here where I have like, I want to kind of bring it to the edge. So I don't have some weird, at least bring parts of it to the edge. And I can like pull some of that through if I want to. And I put some of this in the middle. And also fun fact, like a lot of people like try to do, um, Oh, you will be live Monday since you missed one. Okay. Excellent. That was, that's good to know. Birch trees, their limbs are not white, a paper birch, unless it is a very old birch tree. It has a very large limb, then it could turn white, but usually the branches actually come off and they are dark brown. Um, they actually do have some of the lenticels on them, but they're like, uh, almost like brown with a lighter brown or yeah, kind of like that. I'm just dipping my card in some water because it's not wanting to pick this paint up. Now I think it will. It's starting to move a little bit. Let's see how that works.
There we go. And I don't want everything to be center. I mean, from, you know, the edges. Get some variety in there. There we go. All right, wipe that card off so I can use it again in another time. And then I'll just come back through and if some of this is like, this was drying lighter because remember I dipped my card in water. So then I can kind of come back through here and add some darker spots. It really gives me a nice natural, I think almost e even more natural look than before. That's what I did with my other one. I'll show you again uh, up close here in a moment. I painted with my color in when it dried. I had a little too much water in it, so it dried lighter than I wanted. And I just came back and added some more darks in on top of it. There we go. And I, that, you know what, we must be done with this painting because I just put my, my brush right into my clean water. At least I did it right near the very end. All right. We need to give this a dry and let's get this tape off and look at what we've got. Again. Huge thank you to Rob for sending me the Winter Newton Professional Colors. Uh, this is now the second painting, the first being the first winter sunset that I did earlier today. Is now the second painting I've done with these, and I'm really, I'm really enjoying them. They don't, they don't move and take off like other colors do, and I thought that would be perfect for this painting because you know I knew I wanted this to move but not shoot off across the sky. So here was my one from earlier. I don't know, which one do you like the best? The one I did before or the one I did this time? Before or live? Let me know in the comments. If you want to see other videos like this, uh, please do consider clicking the subscribe button and uh, ring that bell so you get notified. And if there's something that you'd like to see me paint, uh, like earlier today we were discussing, uh, drop me a comment and let me know. I love the way the shadow is come to, can't, can't talk. I love the way the shadow turned out on this part of the tree. It really does give it that form, that feeling like they're so round. Um, yeah, I, I like, I, which one do I like better? I don't know. I kind of like the sun in this one, but I love this birch tree. I love the way that came out. And again, this was inspired, uh, Shelly, Prior Fine Art, thank you so much for the inspiration because she definitely inspired me to uh, paint this because I really wanted to try that technique and I love it. Look at the warmth that we get. Look at the warmth on that side of the tree. I, I love it. I, I'm really liking I really like this one. That was a lot of fun. So there you go. There are my two winter sunsets that I painted today. I am so thrilled that that just turned out turned out wonderfully. Uh, yeah, so definitely do all the things. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are still here watching, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, cool birch trees. They're beautiful, nice techniques. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you all for hanging out with me. If you were watching on the replay, uh, thank you. You're still still here hanging out. Thanks to all of the members. Welcome to all of the new uh, new members today. Ah, oh, huge thank you to Rob for that for gifting so many memberships and um, yeah, members and patrons. Thank you for joining me. I will see you tomorrow live. If you are a studio member, <laughs> we will be doing studio hangout on zoom. I don't even know if I have that set. I have to make sure that I get that out to you, 
but don't worry it will find you we will get together and it's going to be a ton of fun i can't wait to give you a sneak peek at some stuff that is coming that's what we're going to do tomorrow but uh right about here i'm gonna have another video for you if you're watching this on the replay that you might like to watch next and come hang out with me some more in another video until next time my friends keep creating and i'll see you in a video real soon bye guys